In this video, we're going to discuss a little bit about the difference between in degree and out degree in directed graphs in Network X. So, in Network X, we have these things called directed graphs. And that's basically just the ability to show the direction that the data is flowing between the relationships. So, every edge has a direction. And in this scenario, we would have in degrees. An in degree is a number of edges coming into a node. So the example is if three roads lead to a city, the city would have an in degree of three. So it'd have three th edges basically pointing at it. And we're talking about out degrees. That's the number of edges going out of a node or just leaving a node. So if a city has two roads going out, then it has an out degree of two. And we do get to see this kind of visually. So when we're looking at an actual graph, which this will be used in the example here, we have a university network and it has students, teachers, and classes. And so all of the edges are related uh, and directed. They're all directed in this case. And for this example, this is just a bit of code here on the left that shows the out degree of the professors. So each of the professors, Alice, Bob, and Carol, they all have an out degree of two. So like we just discussed with out degrees, this would be two edges going away from the nodes that represent the professors. So if you look here, the way we can check this is in the visual you can see we have Professor Carol an arrow this way, an arrow this way, Professor Bob an arrow this way, an arrow this way, and Professor Alice, same thing. And they're both linking to the class that they're teaching and the student. And if there were multiple students, then they would have multiple out degrees for each student, and every student would be tied to the class, and so on. So that's kind of how the relationship is set up here. Now, if you wanted to see something like the in degree of the students, so right here we can see Eve, Frank, and Grace all have an in degree of one, and it's from the professor to the student. So from Carol to Grace, Bob to Frank, and Alice to Eve. Okay, and we talked about uh, numbers and successors, which is a, another concept here, but just to kind of go over simply what that is in the code, if you run this code and you say, give me the successors of um, Alice, what you'll see is these two successors, these are basically, I think, you know, one degree separated is the best way to explain it. So Professor Alice has these two successors, right? Eve and Math 101. Now, if we look at the neighbors concept that's very similar uh, but a little bit different so if we look at the neighbors of student Eve you'll see that Eve actually has two classes here so Eve has neighbors of computer science and math 101 and those being classes and the relationship being equal between the two of those is part of the reason why those are considered neighbors uh, as opposed to successors. So one of the things to talk about is what type of graphs exist in Network X. So we have a couple different types that we can work with. And what we were talking about just previously was a D graph. So if we look at just a graph, that's undirected. So basically everything's neighbors and you just have uh, one edge between two nodes that's possible directly. Then you have D graph. And so this is where you have successors and you have uh, you have the you have a direction of the edge. And then you have multi graph, which is just multiple nodes, uh, or some multiple edges between nodes. Uh, so you can you can have lots of different connections for different reasons. Um, but it's undirected. So you don't have uh, direction from like A to B. Um, and then you have multi D graph, right? Where you have multiple directed edges. So 
some examples of this. So if you had nodes in a undirected, just normal graph, then everything might look like this between the nodes. And if you had a directed graph, uh, everything might look like this. So here's some examples of successor relationships uh, between the nodes and the different edges. And if you had a multigraph undirected, you might have some relationships like this, where maybe nodes one, two, and three have a couple different varied relationships, um, but they're undirected. And then multi-d graph, you could have something like this, where you have multiple directed relationships possible between nodes. So we're going to go over some code, and you'll have a link to this in this video's description or probably in the comments. So we're just going to go ahead and run this first block. And that's just going to import network X. And then we're going to create an empty directed graph. So you see that nx.dgraph. I'm just going to run that. And then here's uh, fake data. I make these with ChatGPT. You should definitely check that out. So we made the fake nodes and the fake names. And then we have the different node types. So you have professors, students, and class. And then we're adding these edges for these specific roles. So we're adding an edge between these two nodes right here, and then the role right here, and then the course. And then we're adding even more directed edges with attributes. So you see we've got a student, and a role for a student, and a professor, and a role for an instructor, and you got a student, student, all the way down. And then we're going to add the edges from the edge data. And then we can go ahead and we can look at the edge attributes. Just kind of print those out and look at them. If we needed to change them, we could change them accordingly. And then we can check that we made modifications. So that's just some code for that. If we want to check the out degrees and in degrees, we can check them here. So everything we talked about, successors, neighbors, in degrees, out degrees, this is where you can just check these. This is really checking that all of the directed edges, uh, just really all the edges and nodes are configured correctly. Okay, and then we import matplotlib as plt. And then what we're going to do, and this is when it comes to actually styling, we're going to want to talk a little bit about the actual styling. So we have different node types, and for those different node types, we have different colors. So professors are in blue, students are in green, and classes are in orange. And if you don't do this, then your graphs can be kind of bland or they can just all take the same default color. And so what we have right here is just a simple uh, extraction of all of those node types. And then we're going to assign colors based on the node types. And then as we're moving on down here, we're going to visualize the graph. Okay, this K value, I recommend toying with this Right now it's at 0.5. This controls the edge length and spacing. Down here, I recommend uh, messing with the seed value. This is important to uh, set this seed as a concept where um, if you change this away from 42 and back to 42, you'll get the same visualization that you got in 42 uh, but a different one on a different seed. So we're using that seed references that basically the, the same generation happens again exactly as it did. And then we have edge labels. So we have labels on the edges. That's very valuable. And these are the roles. 
Okay, here's just how the nodes are drawn out with different colors, their sizes, the colors that's referenced from node colors, which was referenced up here. And those node colors, again, we pulled those based off of the different types of nodes. And then we have the edges, the edge labels. And then one thing that's valuable to keep in mind is the label positions. So for this one, I made it so that the label positions were slightly above where they would normally be by adding this. Said so Y plus one. So think of X and Y, and this is Y plus 0.1 uh, for each node. And that's that's definitely uh, definitely a quality of life improvement for how this thing looks. And I can kind of show you what it looks like when it gets a little bit different. All right, here's the labels uh, for the nodes. This label positions, that's what actually feeds this parameter right here. Font size is 12. And then we're showing the plot. So to kind of show you some of the styling work, this is, I think, really important. You can see kind of what happens. Let's say I take this font size down to eight. When I rerun this, you'll see that all of the text for the students is a, or just all the edges is a lot smaller. So I turn it up to something like 18. Then we run that. Then you'll see that it's, it's, it's pretty big. And then maybe it might even be too much. Um, let's just turn this back down to like we'll take it down to a 14 but what I'll do from here let's go check that K value so I'm gonna do just like a 0.8 and then we'll look at this so here you can see here's what the edges look like with a 0.8 um, versus we were at a 8.5 so like even if we do just like a 0.6 we might see this is maybe like a a little bit even even better, a little bit wider um, for this visual. And you can kind of go and check and, and modify this to be kind of however you want. And then for this, I just kind of want to show you what this looks like without that. So if I just do for X and Y, I don't add the plus one on the Y. Then here's where the node labeling sits natively. And so this style, you can see sometimes you can't read certain text over certain colors. So that's why I just like to um, just add this in. And this just makes it really easy for you to be able to like actually see most of the labels or really more of the labels. Um, and you could always do something like this. We could do like, you know, X minus 0 0.5. If you run that, like you'll see that they all kind of slide um, like to the left, right? So I'll do 0.1, it's not as extreme. And you'll see now you have them up and slightly to the left on all the nodes, but then you have the situation where you have things falling off. Um, but yeah, that's a good example really of kind of like some of the key elements of styling to get things looking this nice. So definitely just reference this code um, and just check it out and make sure you uh, feel comfortable with it. So keep in mind there's a lot of different styling options. There's themes you could set. There's all the labels and node styling, the colors and shapes of all the nodes or nodes based off of certain qualities or individual names. So basically if it exists within the visual it can be modified and it's pretty robust as to what you can get after. So definitely, you know, if you, if you think something doesn't describe the information in the way that you think would be appropriate or it looks too messy, uh, know that there's an attribute that you can change inside of the code that would make it so that it looks a lot better as a visual.